the most beautiful house in Little Rock, Arkansas is for sale, and today we're bringing it to you. Welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin here at our Restoration Nation. We are bringing you our favorite house in the whole entire world today, the Hornybrook Mansion, located here in Little Rock, Arkansas. You might have seen it a few years ago when we featured it as a bed and breakfast, a place where you can come and stay. Well, now it's a place that you can buy. You can either live here in this beautiful, one-of-a-kind, Queen Anne, Gilded Age glory, or you can continue to run it as a successful bed and breakfast. It's up to you. So come with us as we take you inside this beautiful Arkansas born and built gorgeous Queen Anne home. The Hornybrook House constructed in 1888 is one of the finest examples of ornate Victorian architecture in the state. In 1867, James H. Hornibrook and his wife, Margaret McCauley Hornibrook, moved from Toronto, Canada to Little Rock, Arkansas. Upon his arrival in Little Rock, Hornibrook entered into a partnership with Miles Q. Townsend in a liquor sales and saloon business that flourished for 22 years. After Hornerbrook's financial success, he wished to build a home for his family that was worthy of his accomplishments. Hornerbrook was a business competitor of Angelo Marie, who at the same time decided to build his family a home worthy of their success. Marie and Hornerbrook started construction of their homes at the same time, each man delaying construction longer and longer, trying to outbuild the other. James Hornibrook was the eventual winner of that battle, and his home, the Hornibrook Mansion, stands as a testament to the financial success of these two men, along with the determination and business prowess of James Hornibrook. This video is brought to you by Bright Sellers. Bright Sellers started with a simple idea. Finding a wine you love shouldn't be difficult. 
after you take a quick seven question quiz, they match you with wines from all over the world curated to your taste palette. Choose from 12 different plan options and get 100 plus varieties sourced from 80 plus wine regions delivered right to your doorstep. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outline tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures, and origins. Best of all, satisfaction is guaranteed. You can learn why their bottles have over 600,000 five-star reviews. And if you don't like a bottle, they'll replace it. So what's your favorite way to enjoy a glass of wine? And more specifically, a glass of wine with bright cellars. What about reading a book on the couch? Maybe it's finding the perfect food pairings. You can take your inspiration from the wine cards. Maybe you want to host an at-home wine tasting with friends. Maybe you want to try unique wines that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Maybe ones that you're afraid to pick up at the store because you're intimidated. Bright Cellars makes it easy. Maybe you like to indulge in the simple luxury of having quality wines delivered to your door. For me, my favorite part of Bright Cellars is the fact that I can enjoy a delicious glass of wine after a hard day's work of restoration, just relaxing on my front porch. Thanks Bright Cellars for giving our followers a limited time $100 off their subscription and a free wine tote. Click the link in the description to take the quiz and get started today. The lavish home took approximately seven years to construct. It was completed in 1888 at a reported cost of $20,000, which by 2023 calculations would be $594,000. Though we know that today, building this type of structure would be nearly impossible as the materials and craftsmanship simply don't exist in modern trade skills. This home was designed by architects Max Orlop and Caspar Kuzner, and their home remains Arkansas's best example of Queen Anne style Victorian era architecture. One newspaper reported that all the work on the home was to be done by Arkansans out of Arkansas materials. Those Arkansas materials can be seen from the moment you drive up with the Arkansas clay fired brick and the beautiful quartz detailing in the gables that were sourced from Arkansas's famous quartz mines. Inside, the Arkansas materials continue with beautiful heart pine from our own forests, oak and cypress parquet, and a myriad of other beautiful materials that at the time were sourced only in Arkansas. Some of the home's most notable features include parquet floors, a wraparound porch, small art glass paned windows, and an interior stained glass skylight. The house has an irregular floor plan and is 7,200 square feet. The building stands two and a half stories with a three and a half story tower. Don't forget the difference between a tower and a turret. A tower starts at the ground floor and runs from that level all the way up to the roof line and generally beyond. A turret starts at the second floor and runs to the top of the house and can often extend past the roof line. So there's your architecture lesson for the day. Don't forget, a tower and a turret are two different things.
Very sadly, the Hornybrook family didn't get to enjoy their mansion for long. In 1890, only two years after the home's completion, James H. Hornibrook died at age 49 from an apoplectic stroke. Hornibrook had hosted a gentleman's evening at his saloon that same evening before making it back to his residence and dying at the front gate. Margaret remained in the home until after her death in 1893. After her death, the home housed many different people and organizations, including the Arkansas Women's College starting in 1897. Asbury Fowler, an insurance agent and federal marshal, purchased it at the turn of the century. During the 1940s, the home served as a rooming house for women. In the 1970s, it was purchased by Claire Freeman and converted into a nursing home. In 1993, Sharon Welch Blair and Bob Blair acquired the Hornibrook House. The Blairs devoted themselves to the restoration of the beautiful home. Over the hundred plus years of its life at that point, it had suffered much, much neglect and a lot of what we'd call remodeling. The Blairs spared no time, no effort, and no expense to return the mansion to its original splendor. They removed walls, bathrooms, even an elevator to return the home to its original floor plan. Once the renovations were completed, the Blair family opened the Hornybrook Mansion as the Empress of Little Rock, a bed and breakfast, which was very, very successful under their guidance. In 2019, the Blairs sold the home to Antonio Figueroa and Keith Sandridge, who have carried on the Blairs' preservation and restoration efforts, the care and love of the home, and have continued to run it as a wildly successful bed and breakfast enterprise. Today, this beautiful home is looking for its next caretaker, someone else who will continue to love it as both Sharon and Bob did, and as Antonio and Keith have continued to do.
We hope you've enjoyed this look inside this incredible home that is now for sale. A reminder, we're not the real estate agents. We are not representing this home in any way, nor do we guarantee it. If you want information about purchasing the home, you can find that in the Zillow description that's in the description below. Now we know that there are spaces that you still didn't see on today's tour the kitchen, the owner's suite, and some private spaces. This is still a functioning business, and those spaces were off limits for us to film today. But remember, the reason for this is to show you the exquisite architecture that's here. The secondary reason is to expose you to a property that's for sale. So if you're serious about buying this house, we assume you're gonna come see it anyway. So that's when you can see those private spaces. So thank you again for joining us on Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin, this time here in our home state of Arkansas, in the Quapaw Quarter, in the prettiest house we've ever seen. See you next time.